Hi everyone, Brian Matias here, and I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you how I'm going to edit this photo taken at Silver Falls State Park. Uh, I took this photo about two years ago on February 1st, 2013, and it quickly became one of my more popular photos. And I think a big part of that has to do with the split toning that I applied to the image when I first shared it uh, way back when. Now I love split toning. I actually use split toning a lot on my imagery when it makes sense, because if you use it effectively, it can do a ton to really boost the overall qualities of the image. I actually went ahead and built a preset pack, three free presets for Lightroom and Photoshop called the Splitsville Sampler. And it, you can see one of the uh, presets that you get here will be uh, the one that I used to create the after image for this video, along with uh, two other presets. Uh, it's just something that I really love this stuff and I want to be able to share it with you. And if you find that these Lightroom presets are really jiving with your own photography, I also have a more premium pack called Splitsville, which is 15 split tone presets, also available from the Matias shop. And uh, basically, I built these presets from a variety of different image sources, uh, my travels in Arizona, along the coast, uh, in Utah. And it's one of those things that when I apply these effects to my images, uh, I find that they really transform them in a meaningful way. So both the sampler pack and the Splitsville premium pack are available at the Matias shop. Okay, let's get back to Lightroom. So again, this photo was taken at Silver Falls State Park in Oregon. And just to show you where, so here's our map. Here's Portland. Um, I live kind of in the northeast section of Portland over here. Um, and Silver Falls State Park is down here, down south. This is probably a one and a half hour drive or so. And if we kind of really zoom in, because it's so covered in trees, you're really not going to see um, the waterfalls themselves. Uh, but the photo that uh, I took was taken right here. There's actually this really nice kind of uh, meandering path. And you can kind of see the creek over here. And if we go back to the library module, you can kind of see that curve over here. Now, before we start editing the photo, let's look at some of the factors here that help contribute to uh, why I think this photo works so well. First, if you look at the time, the photo was taken on February 1st at 4.30 p.m. Now, over here at 4.30 p.m., the sun is pretty close to setting. And you can see that because the sun was lower, it produced this really beautiful backlight effect. Uh, you can see the, if you look at the frames of the moss here, uh, you can see how it's totally backlit. Also, uh, this time of year, for whatever reasons, the weather created this nice fog that you can see right here. That was critical. I mean, the combination of the backlight, uh, the diffused light, and also the fog just adds everything to this image. So now let's go ahead and start editing. We're going to go to the develop module. And the first thing that I'm going to do before anything else is you can kind of see here uh, on the top right, uh, and specifically over here, those uh, areas are bothering me. Uh, the top right, I probably had a filter on, and it was causing a little bit of a vignette. That's not surprising. But this right here really bothers me, uh, and even to a degree up here, that bothers me. So this is not a big deal. I'm just going to go to do the crop mode, and I'm going to make sure that I'm locked. So I'm going to select the lock right here to lock the perspective as I crop. And I'm going to just drag in just a bit. And when I'm done, I'll turn that off. So that took care of the vignette. That took care of that annoying little dark spot. And overall, the composition is good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the overall white balance. You would think I'd get a custom white balance, but I, I don't want one right now. For this image, I'm going for pure stylization. So I'm going to take the white balance. And I'm going to bring it uh, over to the right of it to warm it up just a little bit like that. Now, if I look at my histogram, everything looks pretty good. Uh, there's a tiny bit of maybe the shadows that are being clipped, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the tone curve. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the point curve. Usually the default you'll see is linear. I'm going to go ahead and select medium contrast. And what this does is it affects the uh, layout of the tone curve just a bit. And you can see that it adds a nice little contrasty punch to the image. Uh, it is a bit dark here in the shadows, so I'm going to go ahead first and bring the uh, shadows out just a bit. And that's going to help kind of recover those shadows. Now, the first thing I want to do is get my base split tone process going. If you scroll down, 
there's a, a panel under the develop module called split toning. And what split toning is effectively is you have your highlights and your shadows, so the bright parts of your image and the dark parts of your image. And you can assign a color hue to the highlights and the shadows independently of each other. So you, let's say you have a lot of bright parts of your image. You can actually change the hue of those, those bright parts to any color you want. Now, this is how I apply split toning to my image. I start with the highlights and specifically the hue slider. And what I do is I press and hold the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on a PC. Now I'm pressing and holding it. And watch what happens when I click on the slider. What you're seeing here as I scroll to the right is a 100% saturation representation of whatever color uh, I'm on along this hue slider. So as I go to the right, you can see what's happening here is the color is being applied to the brightest parts of the image and just the brightest parts, not the darkest parts. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking around, I'm looking for a color that I think will uh, really kind of supplement the photo. And in this case, when I get to kind of the orange uh, green area of the highlights, I'll let go. Now, everything went back to normal. And that's because the saturation slider is at zero. By pressing and holding the Option or Alt key while dragging the Hue slider, what you're doing is you're getting a view as if the saturation was at 100%. Now, we don't want that necessarily for this image. So what I'm going to do is bring this back to zero. And I'm going to start bringing it up slowly until you know the effect kind of gets gradually built in. So somewhere around here is looking good uh, for the this color under the highlights. Now I have to find uh, a color for the shadows. I don't have to, actually. I can leave it alone, but in this case, I want to. Don't think that you have to have a color for the highlights uh, and the shadows. You can just have a shadow color or just a highlight color. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, just like before, press the Option or Alt key and drag. Now, uh, I'm, while I am colorblind, I understand color theory. And I know that typically for those kind of warmer tones, if you go somewhere cooler, it, it kind of plays off really nicely. So I'm bringing the slider over here to kind of the blue area. And with that set, just like before, I'm going to bring the saturation slider of, of the shadows up just a bit. And something like that. So there we go. Now, we have the highlight hue selected and a shadow hue selected. There's a slider in between called balance that sometimes gets overlooked. And what balance does is it allows you to bias whether you want more of the highlights hue to appear through or more of the shadows. So watch. If I bring the slider to the left, it's going to bias towards the shadows. You see how more of that blue is coming through and uh, the kind of orangey green is being removed. I actually want to go the opposite. I'm going to go towards the highlights. And you can see already how the image is starting to take form. So we now have kind of the base split tone look. I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up. And I'm going to start adjusting some of the things over here. First thing I'm going to do is actually bring some more contrast in. And I'm going to increase the clarity to kind of really bring out those high contrast edges. I'm not going to touch the saturation, but I will increase the vibrance of the image. Now, I'm going to scroll down to my HSL or Hue Saturation Luminance panel. And I'm going to take the luminance slider over here. And I'm going to go over here around to the I think there's a blue section right here. Actually, I can, in this case, I'm just going to take the blue. I want to bring the blue up, and I also want to bring the green color up just a bit. OK, that's good. I'm going to park the target adjustment tool. And for the most part, we are getting really close to being uh, calling it good. What I'm going to do, though, is because the outer edge is really bright, it's a perfect case to use a post crop vignette. So I'm going to go to the post crop vignette section here, and I'm going to go to the amount slider and drag it to the left and start to kind of close out uh, the, the bright areas on the outside part of the frame. This is looking good. I'm also going to bring the midpoint closer to the center. And it's getting a bit too much. So what I can do is I can adjust how gradual the effect is from uh, the dark to the bright. And you do that by using the feather slider. If I bring the feather slider to the left, you could see that it's just this hard edge, which we don't want. I'm going to bring it actually very much to the right. And it does a really nice job of blending that vignette uh, towards the center of the frame. 
and the last thing I'm going to do is apply some sharpening. So Lightroom, uh, in all of its infinite wisdom, by default will always apply a little bit of sharpening. Uh, and I forgot to turn this off, so we'll work with it. Again, the way that I apply sharpening is I always like to zoom into a one-to-one -one view. So uh, if you go to the navigator up here, you can see there's this one-to-one. -one. Just click that, find a space that's uh, already sharp. And when you apply sharpening, or when I apply sharpening, I find it's easiest to see the effect of that sharpening when the image is grayscale. So remember when uh, I had you under the split toning, press and hold the Option or Alt key when sliding the hue slider? We're going to do the same thing under sharpening with the amount slider. So again, press and hold the Option or Alt key, and watch what happens when I click on the amount slider. See? The image goes grayscale. And as I increase the sharpness, you can see that, uh, you can see actually the sharpening effect kind of being applied. So I, I'm happy with that over there. And now when I zoom out, one of the things that I want to do is I want to make sure that we don't apply a sharpening to any areas that are smooth. You don't really want to sharpen smooth areas like this area right here. So there's this masking slider. And what's cool about the masking slider is it's kind of like an auto mask. And if you want to see what's being masked, meaning where the sharpening is being removed and where it's being left, again, press and hold the Option key or Alt key and start dragging on that masking slider. Now here's what you're starting to see. As I drag the slider to the right, you're seeing areas turn black. Anything that's black uh, has the sharpening removed. Anything that's white has the sharpening in effect, and then you have these kind of transitional grays in between. And as I go to the right, you can see that the masking is getting more and more aggressive, and that's kind of what I want here. I only want the edges of things to have sharpness. Uh, because this image is so uh, feature rich, there are a lot of edges, so we're good. And so here we are. Uh, in fact, now that I'm looking at this right here, I might go ahead and increase the saturation of the shadows because I feel like it needs, there we go, that's great. So now we're getting to this kind of really nice, warm, cool, green, blue look. Uh, and so that is a good example how in my editing process, it's not really ever linear. Uh, I'll look at, an ima at the image as I'm building it and sometimes I'll go back and readjust something more basic. So just to illustrate uh, the before and the after, I'm going to press and hold the, uh, or I'll just press the backslash key, which is just above the return key. So this is our original image. This is, uh, you know, it, I love this image. I think it's a strong image coming out of the camera. But when I apply uh, some stylization to the photo, it takes on an entirely different character. And it's really due to the split toning. The split toning is what made this image for me. And so I hope this video inspired you to explore split toning yourself. And again, uh, you can check out the Matias shop, download your free Splitsville sampler pack. And if you like what you see, you can always get the premium pack. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time.